Year 11s, it's Mr. Lim here again for another calculations, the last one of this series, the percentage purity from reactions. Okay, so what does that mean? Many substances are mixtures with an unknown amount of a desired substance with it. So in other words, it's a mixture, there is one or more things in there, um, there's a desired substance with it that you want to try and get out. Okay, so to determine that unknown amount of desired material, we can take all or a portion of it and then test that amount of or portion with a chemical reaction to determine how much of the desired material is in there. So we're trying to work out how much of that desired material is in there. Okay, so here's a question. Why wouldn't we test the whole portion for the desired substance? Okay, so let's think. If we're trying to work out how much of a desired substance is in there and you do a chemical reaction with it, maybe you'll destroy that, chem that desired substance. So maybe we'll only take a small portion of it um, and then with that portion, we'll be able to work out how much is in the total mixture. And then once we work out how much is in the total mixture, we can work out what we need to do with it. Okay, so you don't always test all of it. Sometimes you do, but a portion of it, it can be used to work out how much is in the whole amount. So a chemical reaction that would be used would have to produce a product that we can measure. Okay, and the other reactant would have to be in excess. So you've got your mixture, you've got your desired substance, and then we're going to react it with something else. And that something else is going to produce a product that we can measure and that other substance has to be in excess. What would happen if the other substance wasn't in excess? Well, let's have a think about it. All right. So we're trying to work out. So, OK, let's just say this is the total amount of the mixture. OK, and inside it, there is a certain portion of a desired substance. OK, if we react it with um, something else here. If these two are equal, then we'll use up all of that desired substance and then we'll be able to work out how much was there. All right. But what's even what would be even better is that if we were to use this desired sub uh, this other reactant in excess so that this portion of it reacts with that amount and there's still some left over, because if we don't do that, there's that desired amount. If we do not react if we react it with too little substance, the product that is made, the product will only reflect the amount of that other substance, right? Because what we want is that other product to reflect the desired material. Okay, so that other substance, right? If we have excess of the other material, Okay, remember this is the product here this is the product okay if we have excess of this some of it will react all of the desired material will react to make all of this amount of product okay and so therefore we can use the desired product to work out how much there is of the desired material okay so that's that idea there okay um, Measuring the product produced gives us information about the amount of limiting reagent. That's the desired product. And thus we can work out how much of the desired product uh, reactant, I should say reactant, was in the original mixture. OK, so we use the product to work out how much of the desired reactant is in there. And that I should also say reactant. All right, that will allow us to work out how much is there. So to determine the percentage purity of substance, we need the original mass of the mixture, the mass of the product produced from the chemical reaction. That was the orange thing here. OK, the mass of the original mixture is in, was in red. Balanced chemical equation. The original mass of the mixture is not being able to use for calculating the mass of the desired, again, I should say reactant. Mr. Lim, why you don't get this right? OK, so why can't the uh, original mass be used to calculate the mass of the original, the desired reactant? OK, so let's have a think. Here is our original thing. Here is our desired reactant. OK, if we were to use the mass of the whole thing to work out the number of moles of just this desired portion right we would get we would think we would think that we had this much when in reality we only have that much 
Okay, so you can't just use the whole mass to work out the number of moles of stuff, otherwise that would give you way too much. So the original mass cannot be used to calculate the moles of the desired reactant. Okay, so the process is, first of all, you balance the chemical equation. Then you work out the product produced. Then you work out the number of moles of the desired substance, which is the blue. Then you work out the mass of the desired substance in blue. Then you get the percentage purity from the mixture for the desired substance. Okay, let's have a go at some of these things. Okay, so mixture, so we've got a balanced equation there already. A mixture of calcium carbonate and various impurities is weighed and analyzed for percentage purity of the calcium carbonate. A 26 gram mixture, so that's the mixture in red, is dissolved in excess hydrochloric acid, so excess other substance, and the, calcium, and the carbon dioxide produced, that's the product, was found to weigh that much mass. Determine the percentage purity of the calcium carbonate in the mixture. Okay, so let's work this out. We have to start off with the number of moles of our product because we've already got a balanced equation. So the number of moles of CO2 will be equal to 2.023 over 44.01, which happens to be uh, 0 0.046 mole. Save as A. Okay, so that's our number of moles of our CO2. Using that number of moles of CO2, we're going to work out the number of moles of our desired product, which happens to be the number of moles of CaCO3. That's our desired product, uh, desired reactant. Okay, you're going to use the number of moles of CO2 times the stoichiometric ratio, which happens to be 1 over 1. Okay, so that's the unknown over the known, which will then happen to be a that number of moles okay now we need to work out how much of this 26 gram mixture how much of this mixture here is calcium carbonate so we need to work out the mass of the calcium carbonate which will be equal to n times big m which will be equal to a times 100.09 which happens to be 4.6 grams okay so that's the mass of the calcium carbonate inside the mixture so here's the mixture here's the mass of the calcium carbonate within that mixture so to find out the percentage of calcium carbonate because that's what we want to find out the percentage purity of it okay we're going to do the 4.6 over our mixture mass 26 times by 100 because it's a percentage and that gets us 17.7 percent okay so mixture see this 26 value only gets used at the end do not use it at the beginning because it's full of impurities not going to be very helpful okay all right something else okay here's again another balanced equation a mixture of magnesium and copper is analyzed for its percentage purity of magnesium so magnesium is our desired reactant it's mixed with copper there 5.4 grams of the mixture so that's not blue that's red okay it's a mixture is placed into excess nitric acid and then the hydrogen gas produced is collected and weighed okay so magnesium reacts with uh, nitric acid but copper does not uh, at low concentrations okay so the hydrogen gas then is our green or is it our uh, yellow substance is it the other reactant or is it the product the hydrogen gas is the product. The excess nitric acid is our other substance that we react, it, we react our desired product with. And the hydrogen gas is only found to weigh that much, that many grams. Determine the percentage purity of the magnesium within the sample. Okay, so let's have a look. First of all, we start off with our product, which is our number of moles of hydrogen gas, which is equal to 4.0, oh no, 0.401 over 2.016 which happens to be 0.199 mole okay now I've got the number of moles of that I can work out the number of moles of my magnesium that is within the mixture from the number of moles of H2 
times the coefficient ratio, which happens to be 1 on 1, which is useful because that means that, oh, Mr. Lim, you forgot to save that in your calculator, and that fill that is A. All right. So since that's A, now I can work out the mass because we want percentage purity, and that has to be in mass. So the mass of magnesium is equal to Nm, which is equal to A times 24.31. Okay, that happens to be, that happens to be 4.84 grams. Okay, and then we can work out the percentage of magnesium within the mixture, which will be the 4.84 over the mixture, the starting amount that we had, times 100, which happens to be 89.5%. 89.5%. Okay, so remember you cannot use that initial mass of mixture, even if they call it the 5.4 grams of magnesium or impure magnesium, you still can't use that value until the very end. You start off with a product, you work your way backwards. Okay. Last question. All right. Uh, a 1.2 kilogram copper wire was tested for its percentage purity. A 3.6 gram sample of the copper, right, was reacted with concentrated nitric acid via the above equation. Right. But if the 3.6 gram sample of the substance produced 4.923 grams of the nitrous oxide and determined the percentage purity of the copper and the copper wire and the total mass of the copper in the 1.2 gram copper, uh, kilogram copper sample. Okay, so copper wire, what color do we color that in? It's going to be in blue. Copper is our desired substance. All right. Now we're taking a 3.6 gram sample. Should I color that in blue? No, because this is an impure substance. It's impure. Even this 1.2 kilograms is impure. It's copper wire with other stuff. So even though it just says copper, it's not fully copper. Okay, so uh, it was reacted with nitric, uh, concentrated nitric acid. What color is that going to be? It's going to be green because it's the other substance we reacted with. And what is our product that is produced? It's our nitrous oxide. Okay, so the nitrous oxide is produced as the product. That's where we're going to start. Okay, so the number of moles of nitrous oxide will be equal to uh, 4.9, oops, 4.923 over 46.01, which happens to be uh, point. 107 mole okay that means that that will be a we can work out then the number of moles of the copper from the number of moles of the nitrous oxide times what's the coefficient of the copper one what's the coefficient of the nitrous oxide two which happens to be then uh 0 0.053 mole, which happens to be, we'll call B, All right? Then we can work out the mass of the copper, which will be B times 63.55, which will be 3.4 grams, okay? So now we have to work out the percentage of copper. So that would be the 3.4 over the 1.2 kilograms. Oh no, what have you done wrong, sir? That's not right. Because remember, this amount of nitrous oxide, this amount here, came from a 3.6 gram sample. So the number that you should put in there is 3.6 times 100 to get the mass of the copper, which happens to be, no, the percentage of the copper, which happens to be 94.4% copper. Okay, now, have I finished the question? No, I've got the percentage purity, I've got the percentage purity of the copper, but I need the total mass of the copper in the 1.2 kilogram copper sample. How would I do that? Okay, well, first of all, I'm looking for the mass of copper 
in the 1.2 kilogram sample, what I can do is I know that it's 1.2 kilograms and it's 94.4% copper. Right, so this is, actually this should be, what color? That should be red because it's a mixture, impure mixture. And we know that it's going to be 94.4%. So you do 94.4 over 100. And that gets us a value of 1133 grams. Okay, and that's the total mass of the copper in the 1.2 kilograms of copper sample. Okay, so that's a percentage purity. Just remember, you start off with the product and then you go to the desired reactant and then you use the mixture mass. You do not use the mixture mass at the beginning, otherwise you're just going to make it wrong. Okay, that's all. Have a go at the questions and then we'll see how you go. Send us a message if you have any troubles.